and welcome to the Demystifying Research channel. In this video, McMaster-based virology expert Dr. Caitlin Malarkey will tell us all about the process of growing influenza virus in embryonic chicken eggs. Influenza virus is actually a pathogen of waterfowl. The natural reservoir for influenza viruses are waterfowl. The virus likes that environment and it will grow to very high titers, which is just another way of saying amount. The U.S. typically makes 150 million doses of influenza virus vaccine, and one egg can produce one dose of vaccine. So in order to grow the pathogen in chicken eggs, you actually put a small amount of virus in the fluid that surrounds the embryo. So typically, you'd have a small amount of the virus that you want to inoculate in those eggs. And remember, each year, the the vaccine typically contains four different strains of influenza virus. So you have to inoculate eggs with these four different strains. You typically would visualize the embryonated chicken egg with some sort of light source. So you try to illuminate it and that helps you see where the embryo is and where the fluid surrounding the embryo is. Because your goal is to get the influenza virus in the fluid that surrounds the embryo. And typically you would mark the egg, you would visualize the embryo, the fluid, and the airspace in the egg. You might make some markings on the egg to remind you um, where those particular landmarks were. Then you have to actually breach the shell. Do you have to make a small hole in the shell, which is a delicate operation because you can easily crack and make a very large hole or, or completely compromise the embryonated chicken egg. That can be done in, with different tools. Different labs might use different tools. And in a industrial setting where you're inoculating millions of eggs, sometimes this is done with robotics and specialized equipment. So you would breach the egg, you would inoculate it with a small amount of virus, and then typically you're going to seal the hole through which you've just made in order to keep the environment as sterile as possible. In the lab setting, sometimes we just do this with a little bit of wax. So we heat up some wax, put some hot wax on the hole, and then when it hardens, it covers the entry point very nicely. Sometimes some people honestly just use a little bit of glue over the hole. So that's how you actually get the virus into the embryonated chicken egg. Then typically you would incubate that embryonated egg for about 48 hours at 37 degrees. And after which point in time you would move that embryonated egg into a colder environment. So you'd go from 37 degrees, which is quite warm, to four degrees. And moving it from 37 to four, the purpose of that is to actually kill the embryo so that when you go to harvest the fluid, the embryo is no longer living. So after you move the eggs to four degrees, typically you leave them there for 24 hours. Um, again, you need to breach the shell, and now you need to take out all of the fluid that surrounds the embryo, which can be a little bit tricky because there's a lot of membranes and other things that can also come up with the fluid as well. So you would remove the allantoic fluid, and remember at that point, that is live virus, right? It's the whole virus, very much alive. It hasn't undergone any sort of procedures to kill the virus or to split it up into its components. Influenza viruses can grow to very high titers in eggs, something like 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9 virus particles per mil. And you can get, in the best case scenario, you might be able to get 10 mils out of an egg. So really, really large amounts of virus come out of that egg. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And continue to check out the Demystifying Research channel for more great videos like this.